holy life is about walking with Jesus, uh, getting to know him and uh, listening to him and just having a commun communion with him. Usually holy life, uh, when uh, Jesus Christ continue living in you and you are uh, continue loving Jesus. A holy life for me is kind of live, living with God and uh, breathing together with, uh, with the Word and His Spirit. Holy Life, well, it's, it's, it's something that blows away all barriers and all cultures. It crosses barriers and um, it's freedom in Christ. Holy Life is all about a relationship with God. God is with you all the time and whatever you do, you rely on God. Holy Life. Like a holy life for me means that I don't only talk nice, but I also live the way how I talk. So if I talk about Jesus, then it's not only kind of nice words how Jesus was, but I have to, to show it in the way how I live. For me, I think living a holy life is living uh, with Christ's power, um, showing me what to do and giving me the ability to do it beyond my own abilities. A holy life to me is to live out uh, Jesus in a world today. Uh, it's not about orders and regulations. It's not about commands. It's about wanting to be like Him. None of us asked to be born. We had no choice or say in the matter. There was no possibility of selecting our parents or family time, place and circumstances into which we were born were determined without any help from us. Yet there is another scenario in which we are given a choice. It's in the matter of new birth or rebirth. Jesus called it being born again by his spirit. It's when we ask his spirit to indwell us. But how does spiritual birth happen? Jesus used wind as an illustration. We don't know where it comes from or even where it's going, he said. We can't see it, but we know it's there and we observe its effect. With biblical words for wind, breath and spirit being interchangeable, Jesus was indicating that the breath of life found in God's spirit brings us to new birth. It needn't be outwardly dramatic, but it happens. The same Spirit of God who brought the world into being is the Spirit who indwells human hearts by invitation. John the Baptist played a unique part in preparing people for the new life that would come with Jesus. He told the crowds who sought him out at the River Jordan that whereas he baptised with water, Jesus would baptise with the Holy Spirit. As noted earlier, his words are recorded in each of the four Gospels. This same message was emphasised by Jesus before he ascended. A new era began when the Holy Spirit came to the believers on the day of Pentecost. He came because they prayed for him to come. They waited in Jerusalem for his coming, just as Jesus instructed. But it wasn't a passive waiting, it was active. They needed to ensure that together they were ready for the implications. They needed to be fully open to God's will. Although Pentecost, the birth of the church, cannot be repeated, the same principle applies to each believer. God's Spirit comes only if we are truly willing. In his letter to the Ephesians, the Apostle Paul spoke of one body and one spirit, of one Lord and one faith, and one baptism. Some believers may have needed this clarification. Was John's baptism still valid? How important was water baptism now? Jesus hadn't baptised with water and Paul didn't see it as a priority. Peter was startled when Gentiles received the Holy Spirit before being baptised in water. Still today, there are differing understandings of what is or isn't required. When we speak in terms of spiritual experience and a holy life, the Salvation Army teaches that it is God's presence that sanctifies us, nothing else. It's not good works or years of service, nor any specific ceremony. It's not being kind or abstaining from harmful actions. These can, of course, be part of our dedicated living, but they cannot and do not sanctify us. 
His presence is everything. Thank you.